This video is the most comprehensive guide to chart patterns covering the best and most effective patterns that every trader should know. This is the ultimate beginner's guide with all the important points that you must pay attention when working with chart patterns. Stay tuned and let's get started. All right, let's begin with the first pattern, which is the most famous one in financial markets. And you've probably heard the name a lot, head and shoulders. It's a reversal pattern, meaning it forms following a trend and it indicates that the trend is possibly going to end and a new trend is going to happen. We have two kinds of head and shoulders patterns, head and shoulders top and head and shoulders bottom. Let's begin with head and shoulders top, which forms following an uptrend. So the first thing that we must identify before even looking for head and shoulders pattern is that there must be an uptrend because without the uptrend, trend there is nothing to be reversed so the pattern doesn't make sense this pattern is like a human head and shoulders we have three consecutive highs the left and right highs are lower than the middle one and they are called shoulders and they are approximately equal and the middle one is called head while we are in an uptrend and the left shoulder is forming it's not an unusual thing at this moment because we are in an uptrend and we expect to see a high like this and then declining to the trend line this decline is usually above the line as expected for our trend but sometimes it goes a little bit lower than the line that gives us the signal that some unusual things may happen for our trend line later until now nothing is unusual and everything is happening as they're expected after this as we expect from our uptrend the price again advances and passes the previous high and it forms the highest high of the trend but here at this point sometimes something unusual happens which can be a warning for us that some changes to the uptrend may happen as the price is advancing from the trend line to the highest high we see lower buying volume in compared to the similar situation in the left shoulder and this tells us that buyers are losing strength and there could be an interruption to our trend now after reaching to this highest high we see a decline from top of the head usually this decline breaks the trend line which puts our trend in danger and uh, makes our trend interrupted whether the trend line is broken or not one important thing that happens here at this point is that if you pay attention to the volume you can see that this decline is with higher volume in compared to the previous advance and we can clearly see acceleration in the price declining in the next step here in this pattern we have another advance from the low of the head but it can't reach to the top of the head and in the ideal situation it's in similar height with the left shoulder but in practice they are not usually in the same size so you must show flexibility on this and then as you can see the price declines and forms our right shoulder if the trend line is not broken yet this decline breaks it and put the trend in a total danger if you take a look at the volume you notice that this decline is happening with higher volume in compared to the advance in this shoulder and this more indicates that buyers are weakening and sellers are taking the control of the price and the support level may break and a trend reversal may happen all right until now the trend line is broken and we can see buyers lost the control of the uptrend and for now we can just say that the trend stopped and the price is in a trading range for the price to turn to a downtrend we need more pressure from the bears this line that connects that these two lows is called neckline and it acts as a support level and the slope of this neckline tells you how probable is the reversal a downward neckline makes the possibility of reversal higher in compared to an upward neckline head and shoulders pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed only if the neckline is broken and this break must be a valid break which means the price must close a candle below the neckline with considerable amount of volume as you can see on this chart at this point we can say that the uptrend is reversed to a downtrend so when the neckline break is confirmed we sell or we enter a short position the stop loss for this trade based on this pattern is placed above the right shoulder and for the profit target based on this pattern we measure the distance from top of the head to the neckline and then it's subtracted from the neckline please pay attention that this profit target is the minimum target based on this pattern and in practice the price can stop at any level higher or lower than this and also this can be the starting point of a larger trend so please analyze the price action carefully and use other tools and concepts of technical analysis if you intend to follow the trend and also pay attention that sometimes but not always we see a pullback and retest of the neckline that gives the second opportunity to sell especially for conservative traders who may be suspicious to the range breakout and decide to enter after the retest of the broken level to lower the risk as much as possible 
Head and shoulders bottom or inverse head and shoulders as some traders call is the mirror image of the head and shoulders top. Everything we just said about head and shoulders top is true and applied here but in the opposite direction. Head and shoulders bottom is a reversal pattern that forms following a downtrend so the first thing that we must identify is the existence of a downtrend here. In this pattern we have three lows. The middle one which is the lowest is called head and the left and right ones are called shoulders and they are approximately equal but not always in practice and you can rarely find them symmetric. Uh, just like the head and shoulders top when the left shoulder is formed everything is usual as expected but this decline from the left shoulder high to lowest low which is the bottom of the head happens with lower volume in compared to decline of the left shoulder and the advance of the head sees more volume in compared to the decline of the head and usually the advance of the head breaks the trend line. Whether it breaks the trend line or not the important point here to pay attention is the volume which as I said we must have higher volume in the advance of the head in compared to the declining of the head which shows the selling pressure is weakening and the bulls are gaining strength and the same for the right shoulder lower volume in declining and higher volume in advancing and this advancing of the right shoulder must break the trend line if it's not broken yet. This trend line breaking with all the volume patterns show that the trend has already stopped and a reversal is possibly going to happen. This pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed only if the neckline is broken and this break must be a valid break meaning the price must close a candle above the line with considerable amount of volume so we can buy or open a long position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed below the right shoulder and for the profit target the distance from head to neckline is measured and it's added to the neckline the breakout point as i've already explained this is a profit target based on this pattern and in practice the price can stop at any level lower or higher and this movement can be the starting point of a larger trend so analyze the price action carefully if you intend to stay in the trend. Head and shoulders pattern can appear in all time frames and all types of traders can use this pattern but one point that you must pay attention is that this pattern is more reliable on longer time frames as we have more consistent price action in compared to shorter time frames and another important point that you must always remember with this pattern is the volume. Volume plays a very important role in formation and confirmation of this pattern and you must watch it carefully when the pattern is developing from the left shoulder to the neckline breakout. Alright, the next pattern is called double top. Double top is a bearish reversal pattern that forms following an uptrend. It means that after identifying an uptrend by having this pattern, we expect that the uptrend is gonna reverse into a downtrend. So the first thing to identify is that there must be an uptrend. In this pattern, we have two highs. The first high is actually the highest high of the trend and the second high is approximately equal to the first high and sometimes it's a little bit lower, which is better and it shows that buyers are not even able to touch the previous high and the reversal becomes more probable. In fact, the two highs show us a resistance level that buyers couldn't pass this level for the second try and this indicates that buyers are weakening and the uptrend may reverse to a downtrend. We have also another line here in this pattern which is the lower line of the range and acts as a support level. Until now we can say that the uptrend is interrupted and stopped moving higher and the price went to a range and moving sideways. At the moment it's soon to draw any conclusion that the uptrend reversed and we need more evidence to confirm this. One important point that you must pay attention is the volume. The advance from the low of the range to the second high usually happens with low volume and you shouldn't see any strength in buyers and the decline from the second high to the support level of the range must occur with more volume and we must see acceleration in the price declining. The double top pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed when the price breaks the low of the range and this break must be a valid break which means that we must also see a considerable increase in the volume. At this point, we can conclude that the breakout is valid, so we sell or we enter a short position. The stop loss for this trade is placed above the high of the pattern, and for the profit target, we measure the height of the pattern, actually the distance between the support and resistance level of the range, and it's subtracted from the breakout point. Please pay attention that this is a profit target based on this pattern, and in practice, we may have much lower levels of the price and starting of a larger trend 
and so continuously analyze the price action for your profit target if you intend to take advantage of a potential larger trend. Also pay attention that the broken support level becomes a resistance now and sometimes there is a pullback and retest of the broken level. This brings another opportunity of selling especially for conservative traders who prefer to take less risk and make sure that the breakout is not a false breakout so they enter a trade when the price starts falling after retest of the broken level. And double bottom is the mirror image of double top and it forms following a downtrend. In this pattern, we have two lows. The first low is actually the lowest low of the trend and the second low is approximately equal to the first low and sometimes it's a little bit higher and this shows that sellers are not strong enough even to touch the previous low and in this case, the probability of reversal becomes stronger. These two lows actually show a support level that sellers couldn't break it in the second try and this indicates that sellers are weakening and buyers are taking the control of the price. In this pattern, we have also a high that is uh, between the two lows and it's actually the upper line of the range and acts as a resistance level. So until here, we have a downtrend that is interrupted and it can't go lower. The price went to a range and it's moving sideways. Here, also like the double top patterns, you must pay attention to the volume. The decline from the high of the pattern to the second low is usually with low volume and you don't see any acceleration in price decreasing and the advance from the second low towards the resistance level is usually with higher volume and you see acceleration in the price advancing. The double bottom pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed when the resistance line of the range is broken and this break is valid only if the candlestick is closed above the line with considerable increase of volume. So we buy or we enter a long position here at this point. The stop loss for this trade setup is placed below the low of the pattern and for the profit target, the height of the pattern, the distance between support and resistance level of the range is measured and it's added to the breakout points. As I've already explained for double top, this is a profit target based on this pattern. Please pay attention that here also the resistance level changes role and becomes a support level and sometimes we have a pullback and retesting of the broken level which brings the opportunity of entering a very low risk trade. Alright, the next pattern is flag. We call it flag because it looks like a flag. It's a continuation pattern which means that we expect the prior trend continues after the formation of flag. This pattern is more reliable in shorter time frames and it's more suitable for short term trading and by the help of this pattern we can discover many explosive and sharp moves that happen in the market. We have two kinds of flag patterns, bullish and bearish. First, let's begin with the bullish flag pattern and after that we check the bearish one. The first thing that we must check is the existence of an an uptrend or advancing of the price. This is a short-term uptrend and it must be a sharp move. You must see a sharp increase of price in a short period of time. This sharp move is nearly vertical and this move must be relatively larger in compared to the recent price movements. This sharp move must be on heavy volume and sometimes there are some gaps in the price movement. This sharp move with high volume shows strong buying pressure and the potential that these strong buyers to drive the price to higher levels. So we must wait for a correct or consolidation to step in and follow this trend. This consolidation can have different forms, which in this case we are discussing the flag. There are also other forms that I'll explain them in this video. As you can see, it's a small rectangle or in other words, two parallel lines that is sloped downward. In other words, the angle of the flag is slightly down as you can see. Flag should be small and if it goes down more than 50% of the previous advance, it cannot be considered a flag pattern anymore. And in the ideal situation, it must retrace somewhere between 30 to 40% of the prior advancing. One important point here that you must pay attention is the volume during the flag formation. In this period, the volume is contracted and declines, or at least it must hold levels. And this is the flagpole. The flagpole is a line from the starting point of the sharp move, which can be a resistance breakout, and it's extended to the high of the flag. This pattern is completed and the continuation of the prior advancing is confirmed only if the price breaks the upper line of the flag which is a resistance level in fact and the break must be a valid break which means that the price must close a candle above the line with considerable amount of volume which confirms that the previous advancing of the price is going to continue so we buy or enter a long position here at this point and the stop loss for this trade is placed outside the flag on the opposite side of the breakout here below the support line of the flag and the profit 
profit target based on this pattern can be placed at two levels. One is measuring the distance between two parallel lines and adding it to the breakout point, which is more suitable for conservative traders who want to take less risk and take their profit earlier. And for the other level, the height of the flagpole is measured, which is the distance between the pattern's high and the base of the flagpole. And this is added to the breakout point. Please pay attention that these levels are based on this pattern. And in practice, you must also consider other levels and aspects of technical analysis to optimize your levels for a better result. And bearish flag pattern is exactly like the bullish one, but in the opposite direction. Similar to bullish flag pattern, there must be a prior sharp declining of the price that is nearly vertical with high amount of volume in this period. And sometimes you see gaps in the price declining because of the high selling pressure. After this sharp move, we have a consolidation period, which in this case, it's a flag, which is sloped slightly upward. This must be a small rectangle, which usually retraces somewhere between 30 to 40% of the previous declining and if it goes higher than 50% it can't be considered a flag pattern anymore. And also you must pay attention to the volume. In the consolidation period the volume is contracted and declines or at least it must hold levels. The flagpole here is drawn from the starting point of the sharp declining extended to the low of the flag. If the price closes a candle below the lower line of the flag with considerable amount of volume it confirms that the price declining will continue so we sell or we open a short position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed above the upper line of the flag in the opposite side of the breakout and for the profit target similar to bullish one we have two levels one is the distance between two parallel lines of the flag and subtracting this from the breakout point and for the other one the height of the flagpole is measured which is the distance between the low of the flag and the base of the flagpole and it's subtracted from the breakout breakout point. Alright, the next pattern is called pennant, which its structure is very similar to flag pattern but with just very small differences. Pennant is a continuation pattern and it actually forms in the middle of a move indicating that the move is going to continue. Pennant pattern is more reliable in shorter time frames so this pattern is more suitable for short term trading. We have two kinds of pennants, bullish pennant and bearish pennant. First let's begin with bullish pennant. Similar to flag pattern, the first thing that we must identify is a sharp uptrend trend or advancing of the price and this move is actually a short term move not an established trend this sharp advancing of the price is nearly vertical and in this period we must have heavy volume which shows that the buying pressure is very high and sometimes we may see some gaps in the price movement which more indicates that we have a strong buying pressure and the potential of reaching to higher levels then we have a consolidation period which in this case looks like a pennant we have two lines that are converging and form a small Small symmetrical triangle. This pennant and the retracement must be small, not lower than 40% of the advance. One important point that we must pay attention here is the volume in this period, which we must see that the volume declines or at least holding levels in this period. The flagpole in this pattern is similarly aligned from the starting point of the sharp move to the high of the pennant. This pattern is completed and the continuation of this advancing is confirmed only if we see the price breaks the upper line of the pennant which is a resistance level in fact and this break is valid only if a candle is closed above the line with considerable amount of volume. With these conditions met the continuation of the advance is confirmed and we buy or enter a long position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed outside the pennant in the opposite direction of the breakout just below the lower line of the pennant. In case you want to give more room to your stop loss you can place it below the low of the pennant. And for the profit target based on this pattern we can have two levels one is the size of the pennant which is the distance from low to high of the pennant and this is added to the breakout point this could be a good choice for conservative traders who want to take less risk and take their profit early but sometimes the breaking candle is large and passes this level which leaves traders with the second profit target which is the height of the flagpole the distance from the high of the pennant to the flagpole base and this is added to the breakout point as i also mentioned for other patterns these levels are based on this pattern and in practice you must also consider other support and resistance levels or other concepts of technical analysis to optimize your levels for achieving a better result. 
and bearish pennant is the mirror image of bullish pennant and whatever I just explained is true and applied here but in the opposite direction. In bearish pennant we have a sharp decline that is nearly vertical with high amount of volume that shows the strong selling pressure and possibility of continuation. Then we have a consolidation with two lines that are converging and making a symmetrical triangle and the volume in this consolidation period declines or at least it must hold levels. Similar to bullish pennant this triangle must be small and the retracement not higher than 40% of the prior declining. So we got a pennant and this is a flagpole which is aligned from the starting point of the decline to the low of the pennant. If the price closes a candle below the lower line of the pennant with considerable amount of volume the continuation is confirmed and we open a short position here. At this point the stop loss for this trade can be placed at two levels. One can be placed outside the pennant in the opposite direction of the breakout just above the upper line of the pennant and the second one is placed above the high of the pennant which is a good choice if you want to give more room to your stop loss and for the profit target also we have two levels one is height of the pennant which is the distance from its low to high and it's subtracted from the breakout point and the other one is the height of the flagpole which is the distance from the low of the pennant to the flagpole base and this distance is subtracted from the breakout point. All right, the next pattern is symmetrical triangle. It's a continuation pattern, so they form in the middle of a trend and they show the possibility that the trend is going to continue. This is a midterm to long-term pattern and it's more reliable on longer time frames. We have two kinds of symmetrical triangle, bullish and bearish. In bullish symmetrical triangle, the first thing that must exist is an uptrend. Ideally, the trend should be well established. And then we have a consolidation period in the middle of the move. And after this, the trend can continues. In the consolidation period, we have two lines that are converging and forming a symmetrical triangle, a kind of similar to pennant pattern, but here this pattern is totally different, which I'll explain the differences. First of all, the prior move is not a sharp and short-term move, and this pattern forms following a mid-term to long-term trend, and the triangle is not small like pennant pattern. Symmetrical triangles are bigger and undergo a higher duration of developing, and they can go much lower than 40% of the prior trend. In this pattern to form the triangle, each of the lines should be touched at least twice so that enable us to draw the line as the way we draw a trend line. The upper one is sloped down and the lower one is sloped up in a way that forms symmetrical triangle. And as the way that we consider a trend line valid when the price touches it for the third time, here also in the ideal situation, each of the lines must be touched for the third time and in perfect situation in this pattern, we must have six points before the breakout but in practice many of the times we can have the pattern with four points before the breakout and the result is as expected so with the breakout point counted we must have at least five points in this pattern and we must see a good oscillation of the price between the two lines one important point here that you must pay attention is that we are not looking for a perfect triangle on chart and triangles rarely develop in a perfect symmetrical way all that matters in the pattern is the price action and how it's moving in a tightening consolidation period indicating that none of the buyers and sellers have the control of the price. Another important point that you must pay attention here is that in the consolidation period as the triangle is forming and the price is moving sideways in a tightening consolidation, the volume must decline. This pattern is completed and the continuation is confirmed when the triangle resistance line is broken and this break must be a valid break meaning that the price must close a candle above the line with considerable increase in the volume. So we buy here at this point and the stop loss for this trade is placed in the opposite direction of the breakout just below the lower line of the triangle and for the profit target the height of the back of the triangle is measured and it's added to the breakout point. This is a profit target based on this pattern which in practice must be considered with other levels in the market for finding an optimal level for taking your profit or locking your profit and following the trend in the case that it's going to continue much more. Please pay attention that the broken line or the apex of the triangle becomes a support level and sometimes the price returns to the broken level or the apex area and after that it continues in the direction of the breakout. Which brings us a second chance of buying with a lower risk which is especially a good opportunity for conservative traders who are interested to take less risk. 
and bearish symmetrical triangle is the mirror image of the bullish one and all the details that we just discussed are true and applied here but in the opposite direction. Here following a downtrend the price goes to a consolidation period moving sideways, a tightening consolidation period and as you can see we have two lines that are converging and forming a symmetrical triangle. As I said there must be at least four points before the breakout and in the ideal situation we have six points or more before the breakout and the consolidation period you must pay attention to the volume and you must see declining of the volume as the triangle is developing and the price moving in the tightening consolidation. The continuation of the prior trend is confirmed only if the price closes a candle below the lower line of the triangle with considerable increase of volume so we enter a short position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed above the upper line of the triangle in the opposite side of the breakout and for the profit target the height of the back of the triangle is measured and it's subtracted from the breakout point similar with the bullish one here also the broken line or the apex of the triangle becomes a resistance level and sometimes we see that the price returns to these resistance areas before continuing in the direction of the breakout all right, the next pattern I want to explain is ascending triangle. Ascending triangle is a bullish continuation pattern, which means that this pattern forms in the middle of an uptrend and then the price continues its upside direction. This is a midterm to long term pattern and it's more reliable on longer time frames. The first thing that we must identify is the existence of an uptrend, and in the ideal situation, the trend must be well established. And then we have a pause in the middle of the trend and the price goes to a consolidation and moving side ways forming a triangle. The upper line of this triangle is flat and acting as a resistance level and the lower line which is acting as support level is sloped upward and actually the price is making higher low as you can see and it shows that buyers are more aggressive than sellers and don't allow the price to reach to previous low. Similar to symmetrical triangle the price movement inside this pattern should be in a good oscillation and we must see some distance between the highs and the lows. Each of these lines should be touched at least twice and in the ideal situation it would be three points for each line so we must have at least four points before the breakout and in the ideal situation there are six points or more before the breakout the more the points the stronger the pattern one important point here that you must pay attention is the volume as the triangle is forming and the price moving sideways in a tightening consolidation the volume must decline or at least it must hold levels and as the price is making higher lows usually in perfect situation volume and advances are usually higher in compared to declines all these price movements and the volume changes that you see in this triangle shows that buyers are stronger and sellers are gradually losing strength several times the buyers try to pass this resistance level but sellers manage to force them down away from the resistance level but each time they failed to push the price to the previous low and buyers gradually became stronger and as you can see the price is getting closer and closer to the resistance level this pattern is completed and the continuation is confirmed only if the price closes above the resistance line with considerable increase of volume so we buy or we enter a long position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed on the opposite side of the breakout just below the support line of the pattern and for the profit target the height of the back of the triangle is measured and it's added to the breakout point this profit target target is based on this pattern so for catching any potential higher levels of profit consider also other levels and toes and analyze the price action carefully just in case if you intend to run on the trend please pay attention that here this broken level changes its role and becomes a support level and sometimes but not always we have a pullback and the price returns to the breakout point and then after we testing the support area it bounces and continues in the direction of the breakout which provides a low risk trading setup suitable for conservative traders who want to lower their trading risk as much as possible and descending triangle is the mirror image of the ascending triangle and everything we just discussed is true and applied here but in the opposite direction following a downtrend the price goes to a consolidation and forms a triangle the lower line of this triangle is flat and acting as a support level and the upper line is sloped down and acting as a resistance level and the price is making lower highs as you can see similar to ascending triangle here also we must see a good oscillation of the price move 
movement and there must be some distances between the highs and the lows and each line should be touched at least twice and in the ideal situation each line must be touched uh, three times or more the more the stronger the pattern the volume in the consolidation period must decline or it must uh, at least hold levels and usually in perfect situation the declines show more volume than the advances this pattern is completed and the continuation of the prior downtrend is confirmed when the price closes below the support level of the triangle with significant increase in the volume so we enter a short position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed in the opposite side of the breakout above the resistance line of the triangle and for the profit target the height of the back of the triangle is measured and subtracted from the breakout point as i've already explained for the ascending triangle sometimes we have a pullback and the price may turn and retest the broken level like this case as you can see on this chart and then start declining and continuing the downtrend which brings the opportunity of entering a very low risk trade suitable for conservative traders all right, the next is which pattern. Which pattern can be used either as a continuation pattern or a reversal pattern. And the interpretation depends on where it forms on the chart. We have two kinds of which pattern, falling which and rising which. Let's begin with the falling which. As I said, the interpretation of the which pattern depends on where it appears, downtrend or uptrend. So the first thing that we must identify is the existence of a trend. As you can see, we are in an uptrend here on this chart. So by supposing that this is a falling which forming here, it's going to be a continuation pattern and the trend will continue because falling wedge is bullish and when it forms in an uptrend it's a continuation pattern okay now let's see the structure of this pattern forming here which is a falling wedge as you can see we have a contraction here and the price is going sideways in a tightening consolidation in this period you can see that the price is making lower highs and lower lows but in a way that these two lines are converging both of these lines are sloped downward but we have larger slope for the upper line and smaller slope for the lower line this smaller slope and nearly flat means that it's true that the price is making lower low and sellers are pushing the price lower than the previous low but as you can see the penetrations are not strong and they are becoming weaker and weaker which indicates that selling pressure is decreasing and sellers are losing strength the upper line is acting as a resistance level and the lower line is acting as a support level each of the lines should be touched at least twice and in the ideal situation each of them are touched three times or more so we must have at least four points for this pattern to be valid and in the ideal situation it would be six points the more the points the stronger the pattern the price movement inside these two lines i mean in the consolidation period must be in a good oscillation and we must see some distances between the highs and the lows and when the pattern is developing we must see declining in the volume or at at least it must hold levels in this period. This pattern is completed and the continuation is confirmed only if a valid breakout happens which is when the price closes above the upper line of the wedge with significant increase in the volume. So we buy here at this point. The stop loss based on this pattern is placed on the opposite side of the breakout just below the lower line and for the profit target the height of the back of the wedge is measured and the distance is added to the breakout point just like any other breakout sometimes but not always the price returns to the breakout area which is now acting as a support level traders who are more conservative wait for this pullback to avoid false breakout and they enter a trade when the price bounces from this line and get back to the direction of the breakout all right now let's check the falling wedge in a downtrend as i've already said falling wedge is bullish so here in downtrend it's a reversal pattern as you can see following a downtrend we got a falling wedge with all the conditions that we just discussed and declining of the volume and this consolidation period which makes everything ready for reversal if we get a valid breakout when the price closes above the upper line of the wedge with considerable increase of volume the pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed Firm. so we buy here at this point after the valid breakout the stop loss for this trade is placed here in the opposite side of the breakout just below the lower line and the profit target is the height of the back of the wedge which is added to the breakout point as i said sometimes price returns to the broken level and again jump in the direction of the breakout in an uptrend move which brings the opportunity for traders who miss the breakout or conservative traders who take less risk and want to avoid false breakouts out. 
All right, now rising witch. Rising witch is the mirror image of falling witch. So whatever we just discussed about falling witch is applied here for rising witch, but in the opposite direction. Rising witch is bearish. So if it appears in an uptrend, it's a reversal pattern. And if it appears in a downtrend, it's a continuation pattern. Here on this chart, we are in an uptrend. So after identifying a rising wedge, there is a possibility of reversal. As you can see here, price is moving sideways in a tightening consolidation. Price is making higher highs and higher lows, but in a way that the two lines are converging. The upper line is less sloped and nearly flat, which shows that penetration of the highs are not strong enough and buyers are weakening. The price movement inside the pattern should be in a good oscillation with distances between the lows and highs. When the pattern is developing, we must pay attention to the volume. It must decline during the consolidation period. The pattern is completed and the reversal is confirmed when the price is closed below the lower line of the wedge with significant increase in volume. So we sell or we enter a short position here at this point. The stop loss for this trade is placed in the opposite side of the breakout here above the upper line of the wedge. And for the profit target, the height of the back of the wedge is subtracted from the breakout point and rising wedge in a downtrend. As I mentioned, rising wedge is bearish. So when it forms following a downtrend, it's a continuation pattern and it shows the possibility that the prior trend is going to continue. For example, on this chart, following this downtrend, a rising wedge is formed with all the conditions met and declining of the volume in this period when the wedge was developing. And here the price closed below the lower line of the wedge with significant increase in the volume, which confirms the continuation of the prior downtrend downtrend so we enter a short position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is similarly placed above the upper line of the wedge and for the profit target the height of the back of the wedge is subtracted from the breakout point so always remember falling wedge is bullish and rising wedge is bearish regardless of where they appear so if a rising wedge forms in an uptrend it's a reversal pattern and if it forms in a downtrend it's a continuation pattern because rising wedge is bearish and similarly when a falling wedge forms in an uptrend it's a continuation pattern and when it forms in a downtrend it's a reversal pattern because falling wedge is bullish all right the next pattern is cop and handle cop and handle is a bullish continuation pattern so it forms in the middle of an uptrend and after that the trend continues so the first thing that we must have is existence of an uptrend if there is no uptrend so the cop and handle doesn't mean anything okay let's see the structure of the cop and handle and how we correctly identify it as you can see the price has made a pattern here on the chart that is similar to a cop in the shape of u and a handle next to it that is in fact a slightly downside movement. The cup must be in shape of U, not a V. It should not be like a V because when it's like a V, it shows a sudden reversal of the price. But when it's like a U, it shows a softer move and a consolidation at the bottom of the cup. For the cup, first we have a decline and this decline, or in other words, the depth of the cup is one third or less of the previous advance. And in markets with high volatility, it can retrace to half. And after this, we have a stabilization period that actually makes the round bottom of our cup and followed again by a rally and this advance as you can see is approximately the same size of the previous downside move in the left part of the cup in the ideal situation our cup would have equal highs like this case as you can see but in practice they just need to be approximately near to each other and after this advance which completed the right part of the cup the handle is formed which is a pullback or in fact it's a consolidation that is sloped down. Most of the time this handle is similar to flag or pennant. All that matters here for this handle is that it must be a short pullback that is near to the prior high and it shows consolidation before the breakout. The handle should be small and not going down lower than one third of the prior advance and the smaller the handle the stronger the pattern and more significant will be the breakout. And for the volume when the cup is developing as the price declines and form the lift lip the volume should decrease and when the bottom of the cup is forming the volume must remain low lower than the average and when it's advancing and forming the right lip the volume should increase when the handle is forming we must see contraction and declining in the volume or at least it must hold levels the continuation is confirmed only if a valid breakout happens meaning that the price must close a candle above the resistance line with considerable amount of volume and we can 
consider two points for the breakout based on traders' preferences. One trade entry can be here after breaking this resistance line, which is the upper line of the handle, and this must coincide with considerable increase in the volume. The stop loss for this trade is placed below the lower line of the handle in the opposite side of the breakout, and for the profit target, the depth of the cup, which is the distance from the bottom of the cup to the right peak of the cup, is measured and added to the breakout point. This trade setup is a good choice for aggressive traders who take more risk and not afraid of false breakouts, so they buy here at this point. Another trade entry based on this pattern is breaking of this resistance line, which is connecting the highs of the cup. So when the price closes a candle above this resistance line with considerable increase in the volume, the continuation of the prior trend is confirmed and we can buy or enter a long position here at this point. The stop loss for this trade is placed below this line and for the profit target, similarly the depth of the cup, which is the distance from the bottom of the cup to the right peak of the cup, is measured and added to the breakout point. This trading setup has lower risk and can be a good choice for conservative traders who take less risk and intend to enter in trades with higher probability of getting the expected result. One important point that you must pay attention is that in this case, we have valid breakout on both of these points, but it's not always like this. Maybe we get a valid breakout here at the upper line of the handle and aggressive traders go long, but here at this resistance line, the price may not pause at this resistance level and it continues advancing just as it was going. And this breakout, which is with expansion in volume, may not happen here. So conservative traders must decide if they want to show flexibility and enter the trend or they want to stick to their rows, or it may happen in the other way. For example, here in the upper line of the handle, we may have a candle closed above the line, but no expansion in the volume. So traders must wait for the next resistance line here for the valid breakout. And also sometimes the slope of the handle is not steep and the breakout passes both of the lines. And in some cases, the upper line of the handle is equal to the highs. For example, when the handle looks like an ascending triangle or when the left high is a little bit higher and the resistance line becomes a little sloped downward and coincides with the upper line of the handle. You must consider all these different conditions and watch the price action carefully to be prepared for showing the needed flexibility in different situations. And the last pattern I want to explain is bump and run reversal. Bump and run reversal pattern has three phases, lead and phase, bump phase, and run phase. All right, let's go through each of these phases in details. The first portion of this pattern, which we call a lead in, actually represents an uptrend. It's a normal price advance, and we don't see any sign of excessive speculation in this phase. This trend line must be a little steep, but not too steep, because if it is too steep, the next phase loses its meaning and becomes insignificant to be considered a bump or in other words to represent excessive speculation and on the other hand if the trend line is not steep enough the third phase run becomes unlikely to be significant enough because the trend line breaking happens very late the angle of the trend line must be 30 to 45 degrees that makes the trend line valid for the first phase of this pattern the leading phase in the second phase of this pattern the bump phase price increases quickly and sharply in compared to the trend line in the first phase and we see that it moves further away from the leading trend line. In compared to the trend line in the leading phase, the angle of the trend line here in the bump phase should be approximately 50% greater, something like 45 to 60 degrees. Some trading platforms have tools for measuring angles. If it's not possible for you to measure it with such tools, then you can measure it visually. All that matters here in the bump phase in compared to the leading phase is that you must see an acceleration of prevailing trend and see a sharp advance that is caused by excessive speculation to realize if this advance is caused by excessive speculation and it's a temporary move we measure the distance from the highest high here in the bump to the leading trend line and it must be at least twice the distance of the highest high here in the leading phase to the leading trend line as you can see here on this chart when the speculation stops the top of the bump forms and after that the price begins to go down and form the right side 
side of the bump as you can see. It can be a straight move down or a series of descending peaks and sometimes on top of the bump we see a small double top patterns as you can see here for this case. The run phase starts when the price approaches to the trend line of the leading phase and breaks the support level. Most of the time the price pause here on this line for a while before it can break it and go down. Also after breaking sometimes just like our case here we have a pullback and the price returns to this line which is now acting as a resistance level. When the pattern is developing you must also pay attention to the volume. In the leading phase the volume is usually average and sometimes low especially when it's approaching to the beginning of the bump and then suddenly the volume spikes when the excessive speculation causes the acceleration of the advance and forms the left side of the bump and when the price declines and forms the right side of the bump we see average to low volume especially when it reaches to the leading trend line which is in fact a support level and the price pauses here most of the time and when the breakout happens and the price breaks and passes this level we must see an expansion in the volume so we have a valid breakout when the price closes a candle below this line with considerable expansion in the volume which confirms the reversal so we sell or we open a short position here at this point the stop loss for this trade is placed here above the line just above the high of the candle that broke the trend line if the candle is small and you feel that this stop loss is very near to your trade entry and you want to give it more room you can set your stop loss higher just be flexible and adapt to the situation that you are encountering and for the profit target based on this pattern we can consider two points one here which is the starting point of the bump trend line and the other one here which is the starting point of the leading trend line again i must remind that these profit targets are based on this pattern and when setting profit target and stop loss or your trade entry you must also consider other factors of technical analysis for example for this case this breakout may be the starting point of a larger downtrend and the price may go down much lower than these levels or on the other hand for example we may have a strong support level higher than the profit targets you set and the price may stop there so you must always carefully watch the price action and analyze the price movement with different toes and be flexible with your approach and adapt to the situation you're encountering to reach to an optimal place for your trade entry stop loss and profit targets all right that's it thank you for watching this video if you have any questions feel free to ask and leave a comment for me i'll answer your questions as soon as possible if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and hit the bell so you get the notifications of my new videos. See you guys in next video and good luck with your trading.